Also, if you know the reasons why certain things are your reality, you can do something to fix it. Like, if someone's like, oh, I'm really gassy, um, I probably uh, can't really drink milk. You know, I'm probably lactose intolerant. People wouldn't say, oh, you're trying to use lactose intolerant as an excuse of why you keep farting. Um, it's an explanation. And now I can understand. And so now I can probably try to test that and fart less. I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, it was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. This is all coming up because I remember the conversation that I had with someone where I was talking about like me having ADHD and stuff like that. And like how I, you know, if I'm dealing with like someone who is like a normie, you know, someone without any ADHD or, you know, I don't know. You gotta be bullied a little bit to kind of get along with me. Like the cool kids aren't gonna get me, okay? Cause I'm not a cool kid. The cool kids aren't going to get me. We're not going to be like, oh my goodness, yes. But if you were bullied, you probably, you were bullied a little bit, you probably can connect to me, okay? If you were bullied or you read a lot of books so that caused you to see the world a little bit differently, you can probably connect with me. And I can connect with you, right? There's different things that have that have happened in our lives where we can connect with each other, right? And I'm just saying that, oh, my ADHD helps me connect with other neurodivergent people. So if I know that someone's neurodivergent, I feel like we're more likely to be friendly towards each other. And I said that and someone was like, mm, it seems like you're playing, um, what was it called? You're, uh, you're like, you know, when you put up boundaries and people can't, can't step over boundaries because you think you're right and stuff like that. And I was just like, no, I don't think, like, I mean, of course it's me. I don't think I'm doing that, like, realistically, because it's me. Like, mm, I think I'm just saying that I have a better chance at getting along with people from a certain background. That's realistic. I'm not saying my only friends can be people from this background, but my friends that are from this background, I can have a deeper connection with because we have things that we can connect on. I can't just connect on, oh, we both work for the same company. I can't connect on that. Um, we have to have some type of conversation. And also, a lot of times I have random conversations. And normies don't necessarily like random conversations unless they're stoned. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. That's why I was called, like, I was called gate. I was gatekeeping because I was, I called them normies. <laughs> I was like, Oh, you know, like realistically, I know I don't necessarily get along too well with normies. I'm not over here like I hate normies or anything or down with the normies, but I don't really get along too well with normies. Why? Because I can't have conversations like I would have with the people who have a similar like upbringing, a similar lifestyle or just a similar view pattern like me. I can't have that conversation with a normie. You know what I mean? So it's just that. It's just that. You know, I could, I could have a conversation with anyone and they would think, wow, we're having such a good conversation. But for me, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a good conversation. Does that make sense? I could talk to anyone. Um, but it's not like I'm having like complete fun talking to them, right? And I can have more fun or the odds of me having fun talk, just talking to people um, are increased when it's people that have a similar mental space like me. It's not even like mental capacity. You don't have to go to college or anything. We just have to be able to talk about, you know, the random things. And... Oh, I love jumping around in a conversation. I love jumping. Like, I'll be like, duh, 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 duh. you'll say one thing and then I'll ask another question. I love that type of conversation, um, which is bad for some people because that might be an annoying way of communicating because something never gets done. But I will jump around like uh, I don't see it as a bad way of communi communicating. It's just a different communication style, right? 
And that's something that I've noticed that neurodivergent people are more forgiving for, for that communication style. If a communication style isn't your communication style, if you're neurodivergent, you're more likely to be like, okay, well, this is just how they talk, opposed to a normie where it's just like, no, you need to change yourself, talk like how I talk, right? And realistically, you know, I'm not telling other people that they need to change yourself, talk like how I talk, but if I can't be freely, freely talking like how I would naturally talk, then how can we have a conversation that I will be engaged in? You know what I mean? Um, so to a certain extent, I have to lead conversations with normies. The name sense? Because I feel like I'm digging a hole, but I have to lead the conversations with normies. And... Even then, I still hop around, and I think that can be annoying for someone who's not used to that communication style. I'm trying to take care of myself more. I'm trying to be better at taking care of myself. Now, let me tell you, I always try to wash my hands before I wash my face. But um, I had a coworker, and this coworker got on my nerves the other day. And I was just like, uh, I need you to be quiet. Because he just irritates me. I used to like him, but like, I knew he was going to be an irritating man. Okay? He's like the only straight guy in my office. He's the only straight guy in my office. And I just knew he was going to be an irritating man. Whenever a man tells you, that they are conservative. They're gonna be an irritating man. Men are irritating in general. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Men are generally irritating in general for me. Maybe not for everyone, but for me, they are generally irritating in general. But once they say something like, oh, I am a conservative man, that means that you hold certain beliefs that you know are not popular today and you call it conservatism, conservatism, so you can get away with your beliefs that are, in a way, um, spewing hate. I'm just saying, like, I'm not conservative. I'm very open. Um, I believe in calling people by their pronouns. Uh, I do, I will make like a mistake or something like that from time to time. But in general, if someone says they want to be called this, I'm not going to be like, oh no, you were born that. Like you were born this. It's about how you present yourself, how you want to be presented. It's no big deal. Also, I don't understand the whole fight about not letting trans women use the women's bathroom. I don't get that. Like. You go in, you pee, you leave. There's perverts that can, like someone, like, like legitimately, there's perverts. Every, you got to show an ID card to go to the bathroom. You know what I mean? That's silly. There's many countries where the bathrooms are unisex. Like you go in and you walk out and you're washing your hand and a man comes out of the stall next to you. And mind you, it is a little, <laughs> it is a little like, huh, as an American, but it's also no big deal. I don't think he's in the bathroom looking over at my stall, you know what I mean? I think also the worry is that uh, you don't want someone who you deem to be male in the bathroom because our toilet stalls suck. Cause I know I've been in the bathroom and I've walked by and I've seen a lot of people using the toilet, okay? You walk by in those little cracks and you can see everything, okay? So maybe, Maybe we have better bathrooms, okay? <laughs> Maybe that's the issue all along. It's not it's not the bathroom, it's the stalls, okay? But uh, let me go ahead and wash my face. I still use my Sarah D. My CeraVe be when I'm washing my face, you know, which, you know, I just started back about three days ago. Um, my house has went a little bit to a mess. But, you know, the reason I brought up the co-worker that I work with who's conservative is he's uh, about, I want to say, oh, my stomach hurts. He's about 27, right? And he's just moved into an apartment by himself, okay? Um, 
first time away from his parents to my understanding. And we were talking about how I hired a maid for my place. And he was like, why hire a maid? You can just do it yourself. Like, mm, that's lazy. Why hire a maid? Okay. And that bothered me. Because one, he tried to compare me to him. He said, I clean my own place. Uh, give me a moment, y'all. My stomach's hurting. So, I just finished using the bathroom, you know, I brushed my teeth, washed my face, and while I was on the toilet, I started thinking about Jojo Siwa, okay? And why did I think about Jojo Siwa? I don't know. Recently, I saw a Candace Owens video where she was talking about Jojo Siwa, and, like, she pretty much was saying, oh, yeah, Jojo Siwa is gay for pay. And I was like, mm, I think she's pretty gay. But, like, let me hear you out. And I always try to hear out these, like, videos that come onto my page. It's usually a bunch of conservative dudes. Ah, that's where I got it from. I was thinking about my co-worker, conservative dudes, and then I was thinking about the conservative dudes that pop up on my YouTube channel, which are pretty much, like, they're always fighting about um, how, oh, yeah, you know, they don't like how transgender people are presenting themselves and stuff like that, right? Um, and so I was just thinking about it, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of hot takes out here in the world, and then I feel like a lot of these hot takes take away from the, the complexity of being a human, if that makes sense. You want to go, go only by science, but we are very complex individuals, and we've had very complex lives. We're totally different. So I think there's a level of like respecting like people's differences that I think that people only do to a certain extent. And I like I'm one of them. I only do it to a certain extent. But um yeah, it's very interesting. So I try to like leave myself open for like hearing the other side. But also it's you know, it's just kinda like it's kind of cringe to see that there's people that still hold certain beliefs, right? And again, it's hard for me to like want to be someone who is open to all points of views and then to hear someone say something and it's just, it just feels like clownery sometimes. And that, I know that's a lot coming from me. So let's go back to my coworker. Um, we were talking about how I hired a maid. Now, I've hired this maid twice now. I feel like I've talked about her on my channel. Um, the cost is not expensive at all. It's probably about 20 USD, okay? 20 USD, three hours she cleans my place, right? Um, not expensive at all. Uh, and I've paid her more than what she said that she, she wanted to be paid. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I'm the American. I'm going to give you a tip, okay? And the tip is charged more. But anyway, um, I was dealing with the woman and... Oh, almost fell. I'm looking for my glasses while I talk. So I guess I just sit down and not have glasses for a moment. But I was talking about um, how the lady came and helped me clean up my place and stuff like that. And my coworker immediately wants to compare me to him. And he's like, why can't you clean up your own place? That's lazy. And he's like literally talking down at me on the dinner table and like I told him to just be quiet I was, I was like like you don't know anything right and I'm not saying that like I'm completely justified in hiring a maid um but you know I am putting money in her pocket so there's a there's something there um, but I was talking about, like, when I call the maid, she'll clean one room, and I'll be cleaning up another room, and then by the end of the time, like, we're done, right? Um, it's a tag team type, type of situation. But, like, he did, like, stir up something in me where I was just like, oh, man. But, like, also, like, his thing is he was saying, well, I clean up my place by myself, so why do you need a maid? Okay, and here's the thing. He's just moved into his own apartment like a week ago. He's only ever lived by himself for a week. I've lived in my apartment for 
about seven months and I've called the maid twice. So again, I lived in my apartment for seven months and I called the maid twice. He's lived in his apartment for a week and he's telling me that I'm lazy for hiring a maid. Okay. Um, we both work full time. We both work full time, right? He's only been working full time and living in his apartment by himself for one week. He, I feel like he has a very short sighted view of the world, right? Because realistically, I can understand where he's coming from. Like, oh, I have an apartment. I have a one bedroom apartment and I keep it clean. I clean it up every day. Like that's, that's how I keep myself clean. Okay. Um, and I, I would go a step further and say that like, okay, if you're, if you're sick, because realistically you can get sick and this is how I fall behind on a lot of my house cleaning. I will get sick. I will go through periods of, I guess, sadness. Like my brother died uh, last month. And I will go through all of these emotions that will get in the way of me um, having the energy to, after I work eight hours with kids, come home and wanna clean my entire apartment. On top of that, I have a three bedroom, two bathroom apartment. Okay. Um, the first time I called the maid, I had a bunch of empty boxes. Like I had a pile of empty boxes for things that I ordered to my house. I didn't know where to take them and they were just piling up and I was very overwhelmed with these piles of boxes. It wasn't that my house was dirty. It was that I have this pile of boxes and that made me feel very overwhelmed. Um, and so I called her to my house. She helped me take care of the boxes. She helped recycle them. Like my house was in a better shape. And just recently, the reason I called the maid the second time is because I saw a roach and I saw two crickets in my house. I saw a cricket in the bathroom. And then the day that the maid was coming, I saw a cricket in my other bathroom. Okay. And for me, I don't have it in me to kill the cricket. I'm afraid of anything that's going to jump, pop, crackle, smack. Um, like, I'm running from these things, right? And I didn't have any bug spray or anything like that. So I was hoping that the maid would come. And maybe I'm not being clean enough. So she would help me be a level cleaner so that, like, oh, maybe the roach is finding crumbs that I don't know. I don't know. Like, how did the roach get here? How did the freaking grasshopper get in my bathroom? I don't know how these things are happening, but I know they're happening, right? So I was like, oh, I'll call the maid. She can help me, like, kill the bug, like, take care of this problem. Well, she did, she came in. I don't have a cricket problem anymore. I don't know if they hide or they died, but I don't have a cricket problem anymore. And I believe that the roach that I'm seeing is the same roach that I didn't kill the first time, okay? So, um, like, after all, my house is clean and everything, I came back home one day and I saw a roach in my, like, living room, okay? I really believe this is the same roach. Uh, I chased it into the bathroom that I don't use and tried to kill it with like hair air freshener for the house. It was not dying. Um, so then um, it was running around. I tried to smack it with a broom. It was not dying. It was anything I could do to avoid stepping on it and feeling the crunch of the roach underneath my shoe. Um, none of that worked. So I like got it in the bathroom and then I put a towel under the door so it couldn't get out. So, you know, I might have a roach in my bathroom now. Or, and I made sure to open the drain so like, you know, he could leave through the drain. You know what I'm saying? And then I also, I figured that the crickets were getting in my room or in my house from the drain. So I put the cover on the drain so they can't just hop back out and just be chilling inside of my uh, bathroom, right? So uh, that's what I've done. And that's why I've ordered the maid. And every time the maids come, I've had a breath of release. Like the first time she came, that was around the time that I was getting sick all of the time. And they, they were testing me for bronchitis and stuff like that. And the next time she came, it was because of the crickets. And also like I saw the, the roach and my brother had died. And like, there was, it wasn't like my house is in perfect condition. Like even now, like, 
there's still things that I need to be put up, but I'm not like over here, like really, really bad. Um, in, in my, in hindsight, I do get bad. Like I, that's not to say that I don't get bad, but, um, it just kind of felt like, you know, you can't see the world as clearly as you may think you do. Like you say, oh, I'm a conservative. And so I started working with, you know, people who were, uh, gay and then he was just like oh okay well I'm a little bit okay with the gays now you know what I mean and it's just like you know I hear you and like I just call him old man like he will forever be old man to me um I hear you old man but you need to step out of that bubble because that's that's not I don't think it's completely cool like I I definitely do hear him, but three bedroom, two bath house, uh, working full time, and also having to deal with the realistic sadness of being away from home is nothing compared to being in your own home, like like specifically your own home country. Being in your own home country is my camera overheating. My camera's getting hot, but being in your home country and having to clean up a one bedroom, one bath, you know, like, you know what I mean? So, uh, my camera is overheating, so I'm gonna go let her take a rest and I will see you later. But, um, before I completely turn her off, let me show you guys the place. Cause it is a mess, but let me show you guys the place right now. I can take care of this without the maid. I can take care of this without the maid. Like, that's just a blanket on the bed. Um, I can take care of this without the maid. See, it's not even a big mess, but I can take care of this without the maid. Actually, I straightened up this room the other day. I can take care of this without the maid. This room is never open, it's empty. But like, this is my, this is my area right now that I need to take care of. This is my area. So it's just gathering stuff, putting it in a bag, and then taking it outside. Um, my kitchen, let me show you my sunflower while I'm walking around. Baby, I'm a sunflower. Like, I'm gonna straighten this up real quick. You know, it's just straighten things up. But look at my sunflowers. And you know I mean it, no, you, you don't make it easy, no. I wish I could be there for you. Give me a reason, so. Oh, I feel like my house smells weird, but you know, it is what it is. But yeah, I can take care of all of this without the maid. You know, when I asked for the maid to come here, my house is probably a little bit in, not even in this state. It's, it's different. Like I want her to mop and wash my floors. Something that I don't like doing. You know, I want her to sweep and get the dust. Something that I usually don't like doing. I'm not dusting every day, but you know, things still need to be done. And while she's cleaning up this area, I'm straightening up and freaking, what do you call it? I'm uh, organizing other areas, so it works out, okay? It really does. This is my bra, my bra wall, my bra wall, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, my camera is overheating, so let me just go ahead and say, say it to y'all now that this is pretty much it for today. If I do anything else, I will let you know, but right now I'm going to straighten up my house and start editing videos for YouTube because I don't know if this is going to be a part of that, but for the month of August, it's going to be Everyday Aaliyah. Everyday me, yeah!